Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Okay. Hey, guys. Or original link to the video, top of the description. Usually OBF, I feel like I watch a great channel. I watch videos on a lot of engineering project videos that they have. They don't usually see stuff like this, so definitely interested. I'm sure I'm going to have a lot of questions here. Every ongoing war explained in 13 minutes. Let's go. Did I sell the things original link? Top description. According to the My name's ACLED Connor. Hi, if I didn't say that. Index, 50 countries in the world. According to the ACLED conflict index, 50 countries in the world are either currently at war or debilitated by ongoing violence. At the beginning of 2024, one out of six humans were exposed to armed conflicts in one way or another. And what's most concerning is that the level of violence worldwide has been steadily increasing in the past few years. 2023 witnessed a 12% increase in unrest over 20. 2022 and a 20% increase over 2019. Most of us are acutely aware of two main conflicts going on at the moment, the war between Ukraine and Russia and the conflict between Israel and Hamas-led Gaza. But the media doesn't give much coverage to conflicts in many other parts of the globe. So much of the bloodshed continues um, with little- Yeah, Myanmar, right? I, I feel like I've, I've heard about stuff from there. And South Sudan, Sudan, I, I think? attention. The truth is, much more is going on than you probably realize. And right. diplomatic tensions, international conflicts, and civil wars have continued to heat up in the past few months. So, in this video, I will go over as many ongoing conflicts as possible and open your eyes to the many ill-known strategies of the world. And as the video moves along, I will share less and less known wars that the media fails to cover. So, arguably, the third most well-known conflict is the one Azerbaijan. between Armenia and Azerbaijan over the Nagorno-Karabakh region. Since the days of the Soviet Union, which both countries were a part of, Russia has long acted as the mediator between these two small countries. But with Russia's attention now elsewhere, the delicate balance has been upended. Despite US efforts to mediate in June of last year, the self-proclaimed Republic of Artsakh ruled the Armenian-majority enclave of Nagorno-Karabakh since the 1990s, which, as you can see, is completely surrounded by Azerbaijan. Russian peace this isn't my first time hearing about this. You know, I, I'm familiar with the enclave that's surrounded by Azerbaijan, and there are some conflicts there. But really, none of the details, I, I don't know. The 90s, which ruled the Armenian-majority enclave of Nagorno-Karabakh since the 1990s, which, as you can see, is completely surrounded by Azerbaijan. Russian peacekeepers have protected the Lashin Corridor, a vital route for supplies like food and medicine flowing from Armenia, but after they left, Azerbaijan took advantage and blockaded the corridor in December 2022, causing severe shortages. Azerbaijan is launching military action in the Nagorno-Karabakh Region. On September 19th, 2023, Azerbaijan sent as many as 100,000 troops to invade the Nagorno-Karabakh region. In the span of a mere 24 hours, Azerbaijani troops completely overtook it, and Artsakh officially ceased to exist on January 1st, 2024. With Armenia, 100,000 soldiers for that small of an area. Well, you can't. In the span of. No wonder it got taken in 24 hours. Near 24 hours, Azerbaijani troops completely overtook it, and Artsakh officially ceased to exist on January 1st, 2024. With Armenia weakened, Would threatened by neighboring Turkey, and abandoned by its international allies, Azerbaijan remains officially at war with the country. I was about to say, well, th this is a separated portion of Azerbaijan. I wonder what Armenia might do but they're landlocked and obviously russia i wasn't aware of the whole you know it makes sense you know peacekeeping role russia was was or mediation role whatever you want to call it was playing um there but obviously armenia is not friendly with turkey and vice versa and then you have iran right here right i'm not sure what iran's feelings are about this and I mean, and you're landlocked, so. Wow, that, that does not look good for it's Armenia. It's that the situation could explode soon, as Azerbaijan is demanding a corridor through Armenia to connect the exclave of Naxiwan to the rest. They closed a corridor to get to the other spot and, and then took that spot. And now they want a corridor here. I mean, if they get a corridor, then they're just going to conquer everything south of it. 
probably right. Unless you have like a crossroads to. Wow. Country. However, a little farther to the east lies one of the longest ongoing border disputes in recent history between yeah, the ex-Soviet republics of Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan. The conflict made news in September 2022 when new casualties along the border drove fears that instability could spiral now that a distracted Russia could no longer mediate the dispute. The conflict continues Jeez. to claim occasional big. I didn't realize how much areas in the, in these former you know Soviet territories make sense now that I think about it. That Russia had been uh, mediating. Victims oh. with infected Russia could no longer mediate the dispute. The conflict Pausing continues to claim occasional victims with intermittent skirmishes, but Turkey has stepped in to try and negotiate a border agreement deal between the two countries. Now, let's move Turkey. to Africa, where regional instability in the eastern part of the Democratic Republic of the Congo threatens to become a regional. I, I'm pretty sure this is Central African Republic, this one right here, and I think. They're not doing great right now either, with a bunch of factions in between fighting. Um, so I, I was curious why Turkey, because, I mean, Turkey doesn't even border the Caspian, let alone having a land border. Even if it did border the Caspian Sea, these countries don't border it. They have, like, Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan in the middle. But it, Turkey does have a long history of, like, they're more ancient history is coming down through Central Asia. And so is, is that what, do they have like some cultural ties? Conflict. Between 2022 and 2023, a dangerous political crisis spilled over the border into neighboring Rwanda. See, over the past decade, ethnic Tutsi rebels in the east of the country formed a rebel military group against the national government. In June 2022, the Congolese government accused neighboring Rwanda of backing the rebels, which was later confirmed true by UN experts. The situation has led to border clashes between the DRC and Rwanda in 2024, and the situation continues to deteriorate rapidly. After Burundi accused Rwanda of actually training rebels of the same Red Tabara movement that tried to overthrow the Burundian government in 2015, many fear the war will spread into the greater East Africa region. Another potential international war could break out Guyana. between Venezuela and Guyana I after forgot about this one. voted to claim a huge chunk of Guyana. Jesus Christ, why not just say you're going to take the whole thing at that point? Also, Northern Ethiopia. I think there's a breakaway province, region, whatever you... I, I think it's still part of Somalia. Um, and Somalia is on, you know, the horn. Um, and Ethiopia wants a... Ethiopia is barely um, landlocked. And it, it, it's like trying to get a deal with that part of Somalia without the agreements of the rest of Somalia to get ports into the Red Sea. Or um, Strait of Hormuz area. I think it's Strait of Hormuz. Or am I thinking of something else? But also Ethiopia and Egypt, I think, have beef because Ethiopia is building a dam on the Nile, which doesn't see, it seems like oh that's their right, but it would have really bad consequences for water level down down river into Egypt. Wow, I'm there, and I think Myanmar. Ha all of this stuff, I just kind of thinking of now. I, I don't know a lot about them, but I've heard of them. Venezuela and Guyana after Venezuelans voted to claim a huge chunk of Guyana's territory as their own and send troops to the border. War is not always a conflict between two nations. You see, civil wars are Myanmar? happening in all different parts of the world. Yemen has been involved in a brutal civil war since 2014 between the Saudi-backed government coalition and the Iran-backed Houthi rebels. The situation is already dire enough, with as much as 75% of the population left in need of humanitarian aid and close to half of Yemen's population currently facing the risk of starvation due to the ongoing conflict. Right now, the country is sparsely controlled by a handful of different factions. Beyond the Houthi rebels controlling the capital, Sanya, and the area surrounded, and the official government controlling much of the eastern side of the country, jihadist groups are taking advantage of local dire situations here and there. In addition to them, the STC, otherwise known as the Southern Transitional Council movement, is profiting from 
support by the UAE to seize control of the southern portion of the country to claim its independence, pretty much like Yemen was split before it united in 1990. Yemen's civil war has yet again made the news as the Houthis have been firing rockets across the Middle East against Israel in retaliation for the military operations against Hamas, which is part of the same Shia Muslim coalition supported by Iran elsewhere in the region. This is contributing to disruptions to global trade in the focal point of the Babel and Deep Strait, forcing cargo ships around Africa to deliver goods to Europe. In response, Western forces like the US and UK have summoned attacks on the Houthi military targets. Another civil war carries on in Myanmar, where the military junta returned to power in a brutal coup in 2021. The situation heated up in October 2023, when different rebel factions brokered a deal to unite against the military government in a joint offensive operation that has now displaced more than 350,000 people from their homes. Moving back to Africa, the small country of Cameroon has also suffered a civil war since 2016, when separatists from the Ambazonia region declared their independence. See, Cameroon. Also, isn't there stuff in Niger and in Nigeria as well? Cameroon was 16, when separatists from the Ambazonia region declared their independence. See, Cameroon was once split into a French and British colony. The result is that the Ambazonia region is English speaking, while the rest of the country speaks French. This crisis is called the Anglophone War, as the English speaking minority fights against the wealthier and more powerful Francophone majority. Elsewhere on the continent, Sudan is being torn apart by civil war. Guys, well I feel like the the more ethnic or cultural religious groups say kind of cultural i think is probably the best of those three to pick a lot of cultural distinct cultural groups that might be in the same country in the same borders but have way longer histories of being separate than when these countries especially in africa were split up by europeans with little i, I mean I, I think there are thousands and thousands of if you were to you know create countries in africa based more on cultural groups i think it would look like the holy roman empire map on crack or something and i i feel like when you have that it's so much easier to have conflict around you especially when they're separated you know they're they kind of feel distinct because then there's going to be a lot of whether it's true or not, a lot of paranoia of the other side getting over you and then they can blame something and, and then it erupts. And so I think there has to be more cultural, I'm going out on a limb here, cultural cohesion for all of this to dial down a bit. I, I, I might, that might be completely wrong, just kind of speaking uh, or thinking out loud here. All right. So definitely well, disagree with me if I'm wrong. Around the continent, Sudan is being torn apart by civil war, where military factions ripped open old wounds when they staged a coup in 2021. The UN is seriously concerned about the stability of the country as millions of people have been displaced to refugee camps and growing clashes threatened to spill over into South Sudan, which gained its independence from Sudan in 2011. Perhaps one of the worst situations in Africa is currently in Ethiopia's Tigray region, yep. already one of the poorest areas of the country Tigray oh, is scarred uh, by past conflicts that led to the independence of Eritrea in the night. Okay, I'm I'm wrong. I, I was thinking he was gonna go with uh so I, I first time learning about this here, Africa I think. is currently in Ethiopia's Tigray region. Already one of the poorest areas of the country, Tigray is scarred by past conflicts that led to the independence of Eritrea in the 1990s. The war with Eritrea left a strong Ethiopian military presence in the Tigray region, which is home to the Tigrayan people who have long enjoyed a degree of autonomy. However, the tide changed in 2021 when the current Prime Minister, Abiy Ahmed's Prosperity Party, gained a large majority in the Ethiopian in parliament and called for more centralization of power. Tigray's subsequent rebellion has been severely repressed, pushing three and a half million people, or more than half of its entire population, to the brink of starvation. Tensions had already come to a boiling point in November 2020 when the Ethiopian federal forces invaded the Tigray capital, Mekel. They installed an interim governor after the previous administration authorized new parliamentary elections despite a ban by Prime Minister Abiy due to the pandemic. 
More recently, Abiy Ahmed has decided to divert international attention from Sheikh Ray by threatening neighboring Eritrea just six years after the last standing peace deal between the two countries, which had earned him a Nobel Peace Prize. The issue at hand is Eritrea's independence made Ethiopia a landlocked country, denying it access to the global trade opportunities of the Red Sea. Ethiopia is now. I think Nobel Peace Prize, Peace Prizes should. I think it should be treated more like you get it many years in advance. Or, I mean, sorry, not in advance. Sorry, the opposite. Delayed. Because... Is this just out of hindsight for me? But... Okay. I feel like a lasting piece should probably be a requirement. I, I don't know. I'm threatening to regain sea access by global trade opportunities of the Red Sea. Ethiopia is now threatening to regain sea access by force. For the time being, Ethiopia is seeking to establish yeah. a port in neighboring... This is what I heard about. Okay. Somaliland. Sorry, uh, being, Ethiopia is seeking to establish a port in neighboring Somaliland, a de facto independent region of Somalia. If this idea is successful, war could spread to the entire Horn of Africa and beyond, as Ethiopia's promise to formally recognize and protect Somaliland in return for the deal has irritated neighboring Egypt and Somalia. The list of other civil wars and unrest is unfortunately quite long. So I think that the most worrying thing about all of this is the fact that the two kind of main conflicts, I, I want to hesitate saying big because maybe more attention is paid to Gaza, Israel, Ukraine, Russia. I mean, they're both big conflicts. But that with these two main things going on and crucially the uh, US failure and, and exiting of, uh, you know, disastrous exiting of Afghanistan. This is prime time for pe people who want to make moves around the stage, around the world stage, in getting stuff like this and starting this, because it's almost like if, if like, one person, if, like, no one steals anything, okay? I want to see if I can make an analogy to get what I'm trying to say. No one steals something, right, in a store. Then you're going to be like, oh, like, stealing something might not seem as uh, tempting when, like, you're the only one who's doing something and, like, all attention is going to be on you to catch you. But if a bunch of people all just start stealing stuff, then some it's going to be a lot easier for someone else to steal something, you know? And I, I know stealing is different than war. That's why I'm making an analogy here. It, but it, it's like... A, People are, there are already so other conflicts, so not all attention is going to be put on you, and especially not the priority, since it's already on these two major conflicts and the other ones. And someone like the U.S. and Russia is occupied, and the U.S. Um, is very hesitant to keep playing the same sort of, like, it feels like it's, a, it's in a lose-lose situation, and that a lot of people are, like, seeing... And they don't want American intervention a lot in other places, and neither is are people at home. And so it's just a really good time because it's like the cops are away and everyone's stealing. It's like, okay, time to steal or do whatever you're going to do. So I, I feel like as these two conflicts go on, the main ones that the media is kind of paying attention to, and another main one shows up around this area, then it's just going to... And then that's going to make it easier for someone else and then someone else. Do you know what I, I'm, I mean there? Thoughts? So we will quickly mention the recent coups in Niger, Gabon, right. Burkina Faso, Sierra Leone, and Mali. There is reasonable suspicion that Russia is behind some of these geopolitical shifts of power in Africa, or that they are Ooh. at least taking... Is that why France is having more beef with Russia lately? Because France is really... And the stuff in, with France, too. You know, people in West Africa, mainly where a lot of French influence and, and colonies were, that they want the French out. And I'm not saying that this stuff hasn't happened before, where people want the people that ruled them unfairly before to be out. But it just seems like it's, it's a worryingly good time for people who want to make moves in, in war and in and, and conflict. So that's worrying. Yep. I mean, and this happens all the time in history, I suppose, as 
powers influence wane and and you know maybe we're just in a very obvious moment for that so in advantage of ongoing political shifts of power in africa or that they are at least taking advantage of ongoing tensions between several african countries and france western neglect and lack of involvement in the region has paved the way for terrorist or nationalist groups to overthrow pro-western governments or long-established dictatorships the disappearance of the russia-backed wagner mercenary group has opened the door to other influences in the sahel region as china expands its presence in the area lastly Central America's affliction of organized crime and cartels is getting out of hand as conflicts develop into proper civil wars according to many analysts. Honduras has declared war against gangs that are causing unrest on a national level. Haiti's government has lost control over public safety as gang conflicts overwhelm the capital Port-au-Prince right, causing more than 5,000 civilian deaths in 2023 alone. The UN has declared an emergency and will be sending troops to keep the peace. Similarly, Mexico's long-standing problem with drug cartels is reaching a point of no return, which pushed President Joe Biden to temporarily send 1,500 troops to patrol the U.S. border and tackle the resulting migrant crisis. As a result, Mexico has been labeled the fourth most violent country in the world, despite formally not being part of any war. On the other side of the region, above Yemen, Mexico above Haiti. Jeez, uh, Myanmar, huh? Is that bad? Island country in the world, despite formally not being part of any war. On the other side of the region, drug cartels have been reportedly funding civil unrest and gang movements in Ecuador, effectively crippling the central government's stability and capacity to maintain order in some regions. The one bright spot in the region is El Salvador, where President Bukele seems to have fixed the country's unbelievably horrible gang problem with authoritarian measures like throwing anyone suspected of gang membership in jail. The country's homicide rate uh... dropped from 1147 to 5 I'm not so it's it's difficult to hear it's difficult to try and apply like what would you do in El Salvador I'm like it's hard for me to say what he's doing is right and it's hard for me to say what he's doing is wrong because it's like would you rather a place where you can't go out or you're going to get shot by gangs or you have a very high possibility of being thrown in jail for no reason. And the numbers seem to... Uh, this is where... I, it's just weird for people in Western, more developed countries and safer countries than El Salvador, especially El Salvador in the past few years before Bukele, to say you need to do this or you need to do that. Well, what ha what works in your country isn't going to work in the situation in El Salvador at the moment. So I understand the, hor the horrifying prospect of, like, imagine just someone storming in your house and being like, oh, you have a tattoo and throwing you in jail. No due process. Just shut up. You're going to jail. But, okay, then it's like, oh, no, I don't want that. Ugh. But... I don't know. That that's a weird one. I hundred and fifty six in the past few years. But is giving up freedom for security worth the price? I'll I don't know. decide that. But we have more to worry about than ongoing conflicts and civil wars because many disputes threaten to become tomorrow's wars. Taiwan recently elected the most I would be curious to hear your guys' opinion on the El Salvador thing. Is is it like me, like he might be going too far, but it might be better than the alternative? Or do you think it should be a, a slower, but more, less? I'm just curious what, what you think about the El Salvador situation and Bukele, if... Uh... If you know anything about it, would be curious to see it in the comments. Pro-independence leaders since it became a democracy and Chinese president Xi Jinping you decide that, but we have more to worry about than ongoing conflicts and civil wars because many disputes threaten to become tomorrow's wars. Taiwan recently elected the most pro-independence leaders since it became a democracy and Chinese President Xi Jinping responded with a threat in his New Year's speech, claiming that China will surely be reunified. The threat- I don't understand the, the, that position because 
the the war essentially never ended. Is isn't that like South Korea claiming North Korea is part of them or North Korea claiming South Korea like will be unified? Because it was Chiang Kai shek versus Mao Zedong, right? And then the Japanese attacked and then the civil war had to stop to to beat out their common enemy the Japanese and then it resumed and uh Mao Mao's side destroyed essentially Chiang Kai shek's side and on the mainland and Chiang Kai shek and his forces had to move to Taiwan. And so how can you claim, I know like it's the U S perspective that, you know, it is one state or, you know, Taiwan is a part of China, but how is that the case though? If they have never finished the war, how can you claim that it's still part of you? You you know, I, so yeah, I would see as, as Taiwan being something Taiwan and China being more akin to South Korea, North Korea, in how they got to where they are and the boundaries they have. Does that make sense? ...of conflict in the Asia's New Year speech, claiming that China will surely be reunified. The threat of conflict in the Asia-Pacific region comes at an inopportune moment, as the US and its allies are occupied with Ukraine and distracted yeah. by internal politics. China Japan must be is like preparing itching. for the worst and plans to rearm itself to a level unseen since World War II. Now, let's move on to Cyprus, oh, the Mediterranean right. island partially occupied by Turkey since 1974, where recent incidents have pushed Turkey Cypriots to attack UN peacekeepers inside the buffer zone, splitting the island in two. This attack has been condemned as a serious escalation, pushing Cyprus's what? island in two Cypriots to attack UN peacekeepers in where recent incidents have pushed Turkey Cypriots to attack UN peacekeepers inside the buffer zone, splitting the island in two. This attack has been condemned as a serious escalation, pushing Cyprus's president to announce an increase of military spending by 2% of its GDP. Lastly, many are concerned of a potential Sorry, guys. Spending by 2% of its GDP. Lastly, many are concerned of a potential spillover of the Israel Gaza conflict, especially as Israel targets Iran backed Hezbollah fighters inside Lebanon's territory, all while Western allies target Iran backed Houthis in Yemen. Everybody. I am sort of. Um, wonder what's like going on in Saudi Arabia's mind, because I'm sure Saudi Arabia has. You know, um, it's an Arabic country. It has more solidarity maybe with these people directly than Iran does. But Saudi Arabia and Iran aren't exactly fond of each other, right? And even if a theoretical, uh, say, Israel, Israel was gone, American influence was gone, and, uh, and Russian influence while it's working with Ukraine, I'm sure it's a little more complicated, Saudi Arabia's outlook on this, than, than Iran is watching closely for Iran's response, which has been surprisingly tempered so far, except for a surprise ballistic attack in Erbil, Iraq. Erbil, the capital of Iraq's autonomous Kurdish region, is home to both a US consulate and an alleged Israeli spy base. But the chances that major Middle Eastern players like Iran will enter the conflict are heightened by recent crises oh, at its true. eastern borders. 2023 ended with Iranian border forces skirmishing with the Afghani Taliban over border disputes. After the New Year's, Iran and Pakistan started attacking each other's border provinces with ballistic missiles in a worrying sudden act of hostility. The conflict seems to have been resolved for now, as the aim on both sides was to attack groups acting in both countries towards the independence of the cross-border region of Balochistan. Still, tensions remain high as neither Pakistan nor Iran wants to appear weak or accommodating in such a tense period for geopolitical relations. Makes sense. Okay, so Oh, that's it. We we tried to fit that was as great much video. as we could into this video, but we know that we might have missed something. So if you think we left anything out, please let us know in the comments down below. But that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. They mentioned uh, surprisingly. T I think Ni Oh, they did Niger. Yeah, it's interesting. I I feel like I knew. Oh, I knew, I was familiar, at least knew about, had heard of a lot of most of these things, but there were a few I hadn't. Um, oh, he didn't cover I, cent, uh, Central African Republic, I think as 
some issues going on right now. But there, oh, the one in Cameroon I didn't know about. Um, I'd heard of the Rwanda Democratic Republic of the Congo, the Venezuela Guyana, and um, Armenia, Azerbaijan, Myanmar. I'd heard of that stuff before, but really didn't know much about it at all, except from what I learned more here. So appreciate you watching with me, guys. Hopefully you learned something or can teach me something down in the comments. Hope you're all doing well. See you next time. Bye.